Hey guys, so today's video is a slight mini tea, I guess, because I think we've done like the big stories for a while. <laughs> like this has been a hell of a month, if I can say so myself. But now we're back to kind of, you know, regular, sched regular schedules. Instagram, Twitter, follow me on there. Where was I going with this? Second channel, there'll be a video on the second channel while you're watching this, which is a what makeup beauty products I've used up. Second channel, go on there. So the first story is a slightly older one and it is the fact that Jake Paul had like a music video party thing he did where he invited a lot of people and actually the mayor of like the person actually like complained about the fact that Jake Paul was literally throwing a party for like hundreds of people. Tana Mojo is out partying. Then people are talking about someone who have received so many DMs about this person and they've never been involved in like drama, but they're doing so much irresponsible stuff. The YouTuber is called Adeline Morin. She used to do like DIY videos that I used to watch. Like she would uh, dye her hair with Kool-Aid and stuff like that. And I was really into it when I was about 10 years old. And now apparently she does more just like, you know, grown up vlogging kind of a thing. Throughout the whole pandemic, she's been flying between Canada and LA and not quarantining 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 quarant and not putting herself in quarantine for 14 days the way she should so she would fly to la come back to canada and then go visit her family straight away as if we were in the middle of a pandemic and now even though the pandemic is kind of you know dialing down the numbers in america are still absolutely awful like it's dialing down here and in europe in america it the the, the numbers are huge and la as well it's not like doing well so the fact that she's just flying between Canada and LA and she's not staying at home, she's literally just like visiting people, going out, having fun, as if this doesn't affect her. I think she thinks it doesn't because she's young. But like, do you not have any older members of your family that you care about? Do you not have anyone that you care about? Like anyone out there that could be affected by your stupid behavior. She's also been big on allegedly not disclosing ads on Instagram. There are multiple Marc Jacobs promotional pictures on Instagram where she's like clearly affiliated with Marc Jacobs but isn't putting like ad or gifted or anything on there. Or she could have put, what is it? Like some people are brand affiliate or brand ambassador. Like, how, like she could have put anything there to make it sound like she is not lying to people. So this is someone who clearly isn't involved in like the main big bulk of drama, but she's just on the sidelines doing things that are highly irresponsible. And at some point, slightly illegal. And that just kind of concerns me because if all the ad stuff is true that she isn't disclosing her ads and if all of that is how I think it is and I'm 99% sure that she's not disclosing ads it's just you know it's it's I don't know how it is in Canada but in the UK and America not disclosing ads is illegal you can get fines for it so it'd be nice if she didn't do that you know just for the sake of her own fan base not lying to them not trying to fool them but also the whole quarantine thing the next piece of tea is obviously uh, recently James Charles moved to a new house and he spoke about, you know, this is the first like house he's bought for himself and of course just like expected people already found out where he lives. There was TikToks of a few fans driving up to his house filming it and doing something like a James Charles house tour check or something like that and it's mm, disgusting. I've spoken about this before because David Dobrik had issues with fans showing up to his house and he was kind of sick and tired of it. I don't know how as a fan of someone, like a big enough fan to go to their house I don't know how you can be this much of a fan. Hear your idol speak about you negatively, you know, saying things like, hey, don't shop at my house. I hate when people shop at my house and saying all those things and then still go and do it. Out of all the things you could do for your idol, like, you know, going to see them at like shows, obviously not now, but following them on different platforms, tweeting at them, supporting them, buying their merch, watching their videos, engagement, all that stuff. Out of all the things they could do for this person that you really like, you just had to do the one thing that they asked you to not do. Like how much can you realistically like this person if you're going to go out of your way to make their life miserable? Because invading someone's privacy is making their lives miserable. Our house, as much as it's our workplace, it is also our place of peace and our place of relaxing. And it's our place where we want to, you know, have a little bit of privacy. So please guys, like I don't, I can't believe we've been like talking about this for a decade now. Like since YouTubers became like a big deal, this has been an ongoing struggle. Please stop showing up people's houses. And I know people that watch my videos, they don't do that. I know you guys wouldn't because you're mature, grown up, smart human beings uh, with IQ 9000, big brain energy. But you know, anyone that comes across this video somehow and is not part of the big brain energy gang, I know this needs to be said to you because you're clearly just not understanding how 
privacy works. Next thing, so I recently spoke about, well recently, by recently I mean on Sunday, I spoke about Jeffree Star and how he posted an apology video which was actually just an infomercial for his brand and also it was just disgusting to watch him try to use Black Lives Matter as a catalyst for having, getting people to forgive him and it didn't work because people are just more mad. The thing is, his stands would have forgiven him, even if he didn't film a video, his stands would forgive him. So this video clearly wasn't aimed at his stands but it also wasn't aimed for people that actually need this apology because if you thought that was a good apology then I don't know and also the fact that he apparently is working with a PR agency did they make you make that video because at this point take the money that you paid them half it and give it to me my rates are so much cheaper but trust me I'll do a much better job than whatever they did I'm sorry it you need to fire them yesterday anyway and a few youtubers came out and either spoke against uh, Jeffree Star, which means they're the big brain energy gang, or they spoke for Jeffree Star, which means they are the small brain energy gang. No offense, but you can't, you know, can't really, agree, you can't really argue with that. For example, Cole Carrigan said that he's proud. He's proud of Jeffree Star because Jeffree Star did such a good thing, didn't he? Hmm. Hmm. Using Black Lives Matter as a trap for people to forgive you, hmm, such a good thing. And then Eugenia Cooney replied to an Instagram photo saying, this was a great video, Jeffrey. We're all humans, we all make mistakes, but we can learn and grow from it. We missed you and so happy you're back. And I felt bad for Eugenia because I, I, I felt like everyone was kind of using her for views and she was clearly not having a great time on the internet, but that doesn't excuse this behavior. I think she's a lovely girl and I think that's the only reason why she is doing this because she is a lovely girl and she probably sees the best in people. But matter of fact, there, there is no best in Jeffrey. There is no part of him that is good. He does good things to manipulate people. Uh, he doesn't do good things because he's a good person. He's a bad person doing good things so that people don't think he's a bad person. Like that's literally all it is, in my opinion. That is my opinion. Making a mistake is accidentally bumping into someone, having a bad day and snapping at someone. That is making a mistake, a human error. Like everything that Jeffrey has done over the last 10 years on the internet and then another 24 years of just his life outside of the internet is not a human mistake. It is not human error. It is just being a bad person. And any YouTuber or anyone that really supports Jeffree Star is just knowing my good books at or in any shape or form or capacity. But then Chris Clemens posted a video where he spoke about the overall <laughs> vibe of the world right now, which isn't great. You know, he spoke about the fact that he's been stuck at home. He stayed at home all this time and then he's seeing YouTubers go out and enjoy themselves. And he feels like, you know, why are you guys going out and I'm staying at home doing the right thing? Then he spoke about, you know, like how pandemic shouldn't be political and just all of that stuff, which I thought was, you know, a very valid thing to say because people are really, really pushing the limits right now. And then he spoke about Jeffree Star and how the moment you hear Jeffree Star go, oh, Breonna Taylor. <sighs> oh my God, and then, oh, and then, <sighs> <laughs> Chris is entering Hulk mode. <laughs> I really am just at my wits end. And if I see another goddamn apology video for the same thing you've made four apology videos for, you haven't changed. You haven't developed. You haven't grown. You haven't reflected. If you have, where? Like, I, there is just so much that feels so obvious. <laughs> like, if you have to do this much explaining that you're a good person, you're probably not a good person. This really, I feel so judgmental and I feel so mean and I don't even give a f if people laugh at me. I really don't care. I'm just frustrated. I'm just angry. I'm tired of sitting down, trying to record a video and act like I have something to say. What I want to say is all of this. I'm so f tired of trying to make sure I don't offend anyone or get in public sh with people because I really, that is never my thing. My, I have talents on my own. I don't need drama. I don't need tea. I don't need this sh to stay relevant, to have a job. I'm doing this because I'm so tired as a person of watching all these other people pretend to care for your respect. People are doing Crazy acrobatics. I mean like truly some of these people should sign up for Cirque du Soleil. People are twirling batons of fire to maintain a semblance of respect and it's so exhausting. It is so exhausting. And then it's like what Jeffree Star is gonna say but Brianna Taylor, Elijah McLean, <laughs> honey throw a Lincoln. Throw a Lincoln. 
throw a few links in. You want to talk about all this? Makes me so f mad. Just so mad. We all lost our minds. If you had any brain cell, if you have any functioning brain cells, the moment you heard that, you were like, what was that? Why? So Chris kind of went off and was like, how can you say that in a video? Use Black Lives Matter in that video to further your agenda and then not put a single link in your description. Not a sing, not a single link that you could click on. Not a single one. And then after, obviously, uh, Jeffrey posted that video, he started posting as if it was just a normal day. Like he hasn't been posting all this time because he was self-reflecting and then he posted this video and all of a sudden he's posting pictures of him in a Louis Vuitton jacket. He's going, hi, how are ya? Like, maybe continue self-reflecting because I feel like we're not done. We are not done self-reflecting, Jeffrey. Not, not one bit. I think the self-reflecting needs to continue because you're nowhere near the finish line. Nowhere near. The fact that he thought he could post that video, which was glorified, ad for his brand and then just go back to his regular content. I wonder how quickly after, I want you guys to tell me in the comment section, how quickly after this do you think he's gonna have a launch? Just, just throw a number out there. When do you think his next launch is gonna be? I'm saying beginning to middle of August or August something. I think, I feel like August is gonna be a summer collection. That's why he posted this video. He posted this video so he can have two to three weeks of like a simmer period, you know? His apology is going to simmer down and then he's going to do a, a summer launch. That is my theory. You guys let me know what you think. Why am I so high energy today? I've only had... Maybe four coffees? Rookie numbers. I need to really... <laughs> up here. So the next thing that happened is James Charles went on the Impulsive podcast, which I spoke about recently, two videos ago, and he spoke about, you know, hooking up with people. It was like a very kind of more adult vibe aesthetic, because I guess the Impulsive podcast is a more adult setting. And James Charles spoke about hooking up with some TikTok boys. Then he was seen, obviously, with some TikTok boys dancing on TikTok. And there was a girl on TikTok that posted this TikTok. But she's basically saying that James Charles is queer baiting because he is speaking about these TikTok boys, knowing that people will then start to speculate about which TikTok boy he is hooking up with. Both James Charles and the guy in question addressed this situation and were basically just like, leave us alone. Delete this TikTok. You're looking stupid. And I think, you know what? She did look kind of stupid. I don't know, I feel like James Charles is allowed to talk about hooking up with TikTok boys and then make TikToks with TikTok boys without that somehow being intertwined into one big story. James Charles is a man who is into men, but he's also allowed to be friends with men. Just like women are allowed to be into men as well as hanging out with men. Also women, are allowed to be into women as well as hanging out with women without that somehow being an issue. So the fact that James Charles said he hooked up with someone from TikTok, but then he also is friends with people from TikTok is a completely fine situation. And that shouldn't lead to any speculation about who he's with and who he isn't with. Let's just keep, let's just make that clear. Like even if he that was the guy he was hooking up with, none of our business, quite frankly, just, I, I feel like maybe I just don't care enough about people's personal lives. So then Nikki Tutorials posted a video recently, which was this, I can't remember the title, what was it? It was like um, calling out James Charles or something like, along those lines. So people are getting mad at Nikki Tutorials for clickbaiting her channel, like videos, as if 99% of YouTube isn't just one big clickbait. The thing is, she never does anything that's completely like outside of the title. The title is clickbait, but it is regarding what's in the video. It is just very typical clickbait, but I think because people don't expect clickbait from Nikki Tutorials, it kind of seems a little weird to them, but I'm like, let the girl get views. What? Because the thing is, the clickbait was about James Charles. People clicked on it because they were like, ooh, tea shade. Would that many people click on that video if she just said, recreating the makeup look James Charles said no to? Like, would anyone click on that? No, of course they wouldn't. So of course she had to make an exciting title. I don't know why people are getting so upset with Nikki Tutorials about clickbait. Please grow up. She posted that video and they were shading the whole community. Uh, I loved it. Anyway, so Nikki Torres was like, I'm gonna film an exposed video on the whole community and James Charles was like, I can't wait. And then in the comment section, James Charles was also talking about the exposed video and I thought it was just really um, Imagine Nikki Torres actually dropped a big exposed video. I feel like she's so outside of the drama that she's probably got the most tea on everyone. Because someone who is so uninvolved in the drama is probably gonna hear a lot of stuff from people because they're the person that people are gonna trust with drama and with tea because they don't tell anyone anything. So I feel like Nikki could have all the like 
sides of tea because everyone probably trusts her with information. That's kind of how I look at Nikki. So they start shading the community. Recently, Nikki Tutorials has been liking, uh, well, like hearting comments on YouTube regarding Jeffree Star, like shading him. Someone commented saying, start a makeup line so we can stop buying from Jeffree Star and she hearted it. And then when people started noticing that she was hearting these comments, she went and unhearted them. So she should have just kept it there. We love a little bit of shade, you know? At least I do. People have problems with like people shading people and I'm like, why? Grace and Dolan posted this tweet and it says, we felt like having an open and honest convo with you guys. And in the thumbnail, it says, Dolan twins ended sister squad, Ethan Dolan has a girlfriend. And it's addressing assumptions about us. And there is an assumption that it was someone's fault that the sister squad ended. They say this. Uh, it wouldn't be fair for us to talk about it unless everybody in said squad had their opportunity to speak on, mm -hmm. on their own behalf. And we're not in sync with anybody in the squad by any means, so we actually haven't talked to them in a while. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I'm confident that everybody is comfortable speaking about that, so we're just gonna, I guess, leave that question up for assumption. <laughs> God. I think those are all our assumptions. And I'm kind of sick and tired of them too using this drama for views and then claiming that they're unproblematic and drama-free. That is the last thing that a drama-free person would do is use this thing for drama. So yeah, I just want everyone to be open and honest and say the truth, come out with the truth because this whole bouncing around the topic, it just kind of annoys me quite honestly. And I know my opinion doesn't really matter in this whole thing, but it just kind of annoys me. And I'm seeing that it's annoying other people as well. You either talk about the drama openly and you say what the f happened or you just don't use it for views um, because this is a little bit too serious to use in a jokey matter. And I'm starting to get a little bit irritated. Anyway, now I'm gonna get into this thing that I was just super confused about. So after the Jeffree Star apology came out, Sebastian Williams, who's a fellow drama channel, posted a video. He says that he knows who that voice note from Jeffree Star is about, that he has been told by many sources who this voice note is about, well, from, like who's in the voice note. And that if anyone tries to say that he is lying, he has the receipts to prove it. Which first of all, how about we don't? Even if we are 99.9, .9, even if you heard the voice note with your own two ears, can we please? not say it out loud publicly in a video. This isn't shade or tea. This isn't me starting beef or drama. This is just me saying, if this voice note happens to be true, we wouldn't want to be the people putting this person on blast. And if it isn't true, then that will come out. And once it comes out, we can talk about it. But until it is 100% confirmed that this voice note doesn't exist or that this voice note is fake or fabricated, can we please not put the person in the voice note on blast? I just don't agree with it. Sebastian Williams then did put out a statement basically saying, hey guys, I want to address something I said yesterday, which is now being circulated and spread. I will never out a assault victim. It was confirmed to me by multiple sources that these rumors on the voice memo were fake. Yeah, but how do these people know? 100% that it's fake. I just, I just, I'm trying to see, you know, the sides of it, but I just don't think anyone but the people in the inner circle would know that it's fake or be able to confirm that it's fake. When Jeffrey apologized to James yesterday, it publicly confirmed that the notion of James being predatory was 100% false. No, it didn't because Tati in her video said that she heard the voice note, but it just wasn't serious enough for her to go to the authorities, but she did hear the voice note. So the voice note clearly exists. And you know, Jeffree Star apologizing means nothing. He's apologizing to save face and save his brand, but I don't think that that means anything. I mean, James could fully well be innocent, but he could also fully well be guilty. And I think at this point, we don't actually know. And I just don't feel good until it's confirmed or in some way, shape or form, like more, more confirmed, like just slightly more confirmed to talk about this or to say the name that's on the voice note. I just don't, I don't know. Otherwise, why would Jeffree apologize to a to save his career? because he is in the negative and James Charles just hit 20 million subs. Like at this point, like, do we really believe that these people have any morals? That these people wouldn't apologize to a presser to save their own career? Of course they would. Jeffree Star could have a year ago, a year ago, gone to the authorities to have this sorted out. And instead he was parading the voice note like a trophy. These people have no morals. I wouldn't believe a single word that comes out of these people's mouths. Make it make sense. That's why I shared the name of the person behind the voice memo because he contributed to this false narrative, but we don't know that. But never once spoke out when Jeffrey weaponized these claims against James. But regardless, it's a story that is best told by the people involved. I tried to ask people on Twitter who shared the clip to take it down and to not spread it further, but my words have consequences and I will take responsibility. I want to apologize to every victim had to bear such a secret. This is a story only they can share and no one else. With that being said, the person who created the voice memo on James does not belong to this category. I want to make that perfectly clear. Now hear me out. I am not confirming either which way. The voice memo could be fake. 
but the voice memo could also be very much real. And then this just looks really bad. I have learned over the last, you know, two years of being on YouTube that sometimes speaking out ahead of time, it's not the best thing you can do. I mean, Sanders Kennedy, it literally happened last week. In today's video, I've really been checking this fake watch a lot. Clearly I'm running out of time and patience. I mean, we saw what happened with Sanders Kennedy. This whole investigation thing could have been true because he was the one that gave him the tip. So it could have turned into a real investigation, but he really jumped the gun. That was the issue. This could fully well be the truth. The voice note could be fake. James Charles could be innocent, but jumping the gun with information can end in a really bad way. And I would just take that as a lesson to not do that, to not jump the gun with things. I think some things is it, it's okay to jump the gun with and if you make a mistake, it's not going to ruin someone's life. But things like this and things of this nature, mm, I would leave it out and just make sure that, you know, you know 100% what you're talking about before you say it in a video. But that's my opinion on the situation. And the last thing, Bobbi Brown, a very like classic, <laughs> traditional, a well-known makeup brand is coming out with hunger suppressants, that's what they're called, which I think is the worst thing that a makeup brand could have come out with in big 2020 or just any year, you know, 2012 or 2032. Not a good thing. Diet suppressants, hunger suppressants, please don't. Thanks. I don't know who told them this was a good idea, but anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up, comment down below anything you want to comment down below. Subscribe, I post videos whenever something happens. Say that bell, you'll be notified when that's happening. Social media links and second channel in description. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.